Um, so up next we have Dr. Mark Oliver Hall, um, and he's presented on Polex and all Cibel and the French cybersecurity ecosystem. Dr. Mark Oliver Paul is a research director at IMT Atlantic, France. He directs the industrial chair of cybersecurity for critical network infrastructures. He is also the coordinator of the future education activities for the Fran German French Academy for the Industry of the Future and the vice president of the German chapter of the ACM. He is very active in the research community with a focus on the network and service management community with its flagships IM, NOMS, and CNSM. Since 2003, he has received numerous awards for his university teaching, including the Ernest Otto Fisher Prize um, of the Technical University of Munich for Excellence in Teaching and the PhD Supervisory Award in 2020. He is the co founder of future iot.org and um, as well being human without algorithms.org. In 2021, he founded talk.cybercni.fr. Over to you, Dr. Mark Oliver. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron, for the kind introduction. In case you wonder, I have heard my vocal cords, therefore uh, my voice is a little bit weird. So <clears throat> I hope you can still understand me. So let me share the screen. <clears throat> Yeah, and as in the talk before, we'll do the questions afterwards. So um, <clears throat> feel free to add them to the chat as soon as you have some. <clears throat> okay, so my talk is called A Holistic Approach to Cybersecurity. And uh, the good thing about the Britain region where I'm located at the moment is that this is really the cybersecurity region of France because everybody here knows what cybersecurity is literally. And uh, this is a really great thing. And uh, I'm from IMT Atlantique and I'm heading the chair of cybersecurity for critical network infrastructures, as Aaron was just introducing. And I'm also introducing today the Paul Excellence Cyber. So <clears throat> the Paul Excellence Cyber is a, um, an initiative or a collaboration between different actors. I'll give a little bit more details. And uh, the English translation would be a cyber center of excellence. So we bring together different actors for different purposes so for education, research, and industrial development. <clears throat> so these are the three pillars that we have. And uh, we want to foster cybersecurity work not only in Britain, but all over Europe and also worldwide. And uh, we are a lighthouse region for that. And uh, therefore, I'm very happy to present to you today a little bit the works that we have. I brought you a video here that I uh, want to show now. It's in French, but I'm sure that you will still get the main points. So um, the audio should normally work. If not, Aaron, it would be great if you would tell me. Entre email frauduleux et vol de données, arnaque ou usurpation d'identité, prise de contrôle à distance de machines et de chaînes de production, espionnage industriel ou encore pratique de rançonnage et piratage de données, le constat est sans appel. De nombreuses menaces planent sur les systèmes d'information des entreprises. En France, 81% des entreprises ont fait l'objet d'au moins une attaque. La cybersécurité constitue donc pour les entreprises un enjeu vital, une obligation réglementaire et un positionnement stratégique. La Bretagne est dotée d'un véritable écosystème en cybersécurité, favorable à une montée en puissance. On compte près de 200 acteurs pour environ 8000 emplois autour de la cybersécurité dans 150 entreprises. 2800 étudiants par an sont formés. À tout cela s'ajoute la présence forte du ministère des Armées dans la région. On recense une dizaine d'établissements d'enseignement supérieur proposant des formations initiales et continues. L'Institut Mine Télécom, le NSIBS, l'ISEN, ou encore Centrale Supélec et l'École des Transmissions. La montée en compétences en cybersécurité est également une nécessité ressentie par les informaticiens actuellement sur le marché. La formation continue est donc attendue, elle permettrait aussi d'améliorer l'employabilité d'informaticiens sans emploi. Un marché de l'emploi en cybersécurité se structure autour d'un tissu de grands groupes, PME, ETI et start-up. Tous secteurs confondus, chaque entreprise est concernée. Les métiers de la cybersécurité reflètent une multitude de compétences. Des architectes et développeurs, 
des évaluateurs intégrateurs et experts R&D, mais aussi des analystes de crise, des juristes spécialisés et enfin des formateurs sensibilisateurs et des consultants. En Bretagne, 200 chercheurs travaillent sur la cybersécurité au sein de centres de recherche de haut niveau. À l'initiative du ministère des Armées et de la Région, le pôle d'excellence cyber est un véritable soutien ayant pour mission d'accompagner au niveau national le secteur de la formation, de la recherche et les entreprises. Une mission de développement des entreprises cybersécurité a été confiée à Bretagne Développement Innovation. Leur rôle est de fédérer, d'animer et de diffuser l'enjeu de la cybersécurité dans les filières comme l'énergie, la santé, la mobilité ou l'industrie. Ok, great. Now you have a little bit an overview of the different actors and also of the different uh, missions that you have. Um, <coughs> yeah, so let's continue. <coughs> so as shown before, we have the three pillars that you see here. So the first one is that for the companies and also together with the education um, places that we have here in Brittany, we want to develop skills and trainings um, together also with the Department of Defense um, for cyber, cyber resources. We want to train students, which will become the experts of tomorrow. And we also want to provide industry training programs, or not we want to, but we do. We provide industry training programs. <clears throat> And this is also a very important aspect of the ecosystem in France, that there's a really close link between the public and uh, actors and the private sector. So the companies really get a lot of support and the Polex and Ossibar is exactly there for doing that. The second is that we stimulate the research again together between industry and uh, academia and uh, that we also foster the convergence of uh, research training and innovation then to products and to being part of everyday businesses. And with the COVID-19 confinement and the staying at home, we see more and more how we rely on infrastructures that are based on IT that are in the cyber. And therefore, this is more important than ever. The last one is uh, support creating products, making products uh, cyber secure in quotation marks, and also to promote the expertise that we have here beyond um, Brittany region to entire France, Europe, and the entire globe. <clears throat> it lost focus again, sorry. Okay, good. Yeah, so here you see again the Brittany region with the different actors that we have here, and uh, you see different companies that you're probably aware of, plus you see different academic actors in there. A list of the partners is also here. And um, <clears throat> if you are familiar a little bit with the French ecosystem, you see that really uh, most of the relevant players, all of the key players in the cybersecurity area are present in the Pole Exelon Cyber, and we're always open to receive also new members in there. So what do we offer as concrete resources to the partners that we have? So as said already, we have uh, trainings that we offer through our partners and where we foster the creation. We have a research catalog with an overview on the research resources that are there. We have a repository that lists all the components of cybersecurity, again, helping companies to be aware of the threats and the possibilities in that direction. We have uh, seven industrial chairs. These are chairs that are supported by industry companies, and I'm leading one of them, the biggest one of them. And uh, This is also a very interesting and unique setting, at least in Germany, where I've been before, I've not seen that, that you have companies that are so closely following the research. And in the second part of my presentation, I'll give a little bit more details about that. We offer cyber training labs, we give guides for communities, and we have a big yearly conference, the European Cyber Week, where we bring together experts, leading researchers in the fields of AI and cybersecurity. <clears throat> we also have something that might be interesting for you because it's happening online always. This is a speaker series. It's called Talk Cyber CNIFR. And in this series, we have every month, every last Wednesday in the month at five o'clock, an interesting talk about a cybersecurity topic. The co 
role there is to uh, sensibilize the people about cybersecurity topics so that they can then um, understand better what has to be done and get some answers on interesting industrial and academic problems. We also have a newsletter where you are um, invited to subscribe so you can write an email to Mallory Darley at Paul Excelosiba if you want to receive a monthly newsletter on the activities that we have at the poll. And on the right side, you see the cordial invitation to the next edition of the uh, speaker series. Okay, good. So uh, this was the first part about the Pol Exelor Cyber, and uh, that brings me to the second part. So as I told you, an important aspect of the Pol Exelor Cyber is bringing together research and industry. And <clears throat> as I said, I'm leading an industrial chair. I have uh, five industry partners at the moment, which are Airbus, Amosus, BNP Paribas, the bank, EDF, which is the electricity and uh, gas provider here in France. Nokia Bell Labs and also Polex Cyber and Région Bretagne. Um, the chair is a collaboration between three schools within the IMT, which is the biggest engineering school here in France, Ecosystem, which is the IMT Atlantique, the site where I am at, Telecom Paris and Telecom Sud Paris. And this is great because it's a really a big collaboration between main actors in the cybersecurity field. The industrial chair means that I really have often meetings so multiple times per month with the representatives from the industry and that allows us to do research that is really close to the industry needs and at the other hand also the industry partners to benefit directly from our research results. <clears throat> so to motivate a bit um, open the need for cybersecurity, I don't think I have to motivate it with you but uh, you might have heard or might have seen that with the COVID-19, the um, security incidents increased and uh, that shows us that cybersecurity is really important and everybody has to consider it. <clears throat> so my chair is cyber called cybersecurity for critical network infrastructure. So what are critical network infrastructure as well? It's all the systems surrounding us on a daily basis that are based on computers in the cyber, including healthcare, water supply, energy supply, communication, computing in general, and also industry 4.0, which is a core topic for us, transportation, defense also, then banking, research, agriculture, so many, many different aspects. We are organized in different uh, directions, so or in three main pillars. The first one is called prevent, so we work together with the companies on how can we make the products as secure as possible by design. So this is the first pillar, but it's not enough because you cannot secure an IoT, so Internet of Things system by design because it's dynamic, it has to change, change the configuration of a production site, for instance, and therefore we have the second pillar, which is detection. So the second part we do is we do anomaly detection, so we look at when we have an industrial system of one of our partners, how can we protect it during the run while it changes so that uh, there are no attacks happening? And the third part is called mitigation, which is two parts for us. So first one is visualization. So we work on uh, innovative uh, mixed reality interfaces where you can really enter the data and analyze them. And the other part is automated defenses. So how can we defend against attacks in an automated way? To do so, we have uh, different methods. So we use uh, machine learning, of course, distributed ledgers, digital twins, and also ethics is an important aspect when you have automated behavior for doing something. We have uh, continuously about 10 thesis running. So here you see the topics and you see that we have a full spectrum that we cover from the sensors and actuators on the shop floor over these services that are running in uh, local installations, in edges, in clouds, up to the defense and visualization side on the right. <clears throat> so when you look at a typical industrial automation system, then you have the factory at the bottom, you have the human operators on the top, 
we at the right side have now virtual remote operators and in between you have different layers of activity starting with the managed system at the bottom then having the management processes on top of that having digital twins visualization processes and then also display possibilities and i show you this because it shows you a little bit which are the aspects and the works that could be covered when you work together with an industrial chair or when you work together in the Polex and Ossiver ecosystem, because you really have access to in-depth cybersecurity work through the cluster of the pole. For us, of course, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning is an important topic in this entire ecosystem in the processes of doing some work in here. We do not only do theoretical work, but especially with industrial partners, of course, we do applied research also. So we try to get close to products. Of course, as a research partner, we are not a um, pre-development facility, but with the partners, we develop it to a certain piloting stage. And then the partners take over and bring the works together with us to a um, final product state. The good thing with us at the chair is uh, so industry 4.0 is our use case, so industrial internet of things. And for doing the applied research, we use uh, a lot of test beds that you see here at the bottom left in the picture. And uh, those test beds here are connected then with uh, real industrial controllers. And uh, then we also have a visualization part here on the right side. And uh, with uh, this test bed, you have the unique possibility to do real emulation of factories and testing security algorithms, testing weaknesses, and looking at what is happening there. And this is a unique facility that you have also access to through the Pôle Excellence if you are in the French ecosystem. At the left side, we also have an interesting aspect, which is called a honeypot. So we presented this at the last European Cyber Week, uh, this work. So this means that we connect this infrastructure that we have, that is a realistic infrastructure to the internet in order to attract physical or not physical, but cyber attackers to get into our system so that we can observe what they are doing. Plus that we can test how our defense mechanisms are working in that system. Here you see the uh, different uh, layers of uh, such a test infrastructure. And um, to visualize you a little bit, the systems that we have running there, it's quite interesting. Therefore, I brought you some videos. So let's have a look at them. So on the top left, you see the miniaturized uh, factories. The third on the top is also a company from the Brittany region. So they have a simulator for a uh, cream factory environment and other environments that you can also use for doing cybersecurity research. And then, of course, we have uh, cloud resources, we have uh, servers and so on. We have um, in the middle row different um, test facilities using different um, programmable logic controllers, or different industrial controllers. On the right side, you see the 3D interfaces that we're using. And we also have something that is also cool. We have some fab, so-called fab labs. So these are 3D uh, maker spaces that are also quite common here in France, which is also a huge advantage of being in this area. OK, good. So uh, yeah, this uh, brings me already um, to the closing of my presentation. So I showed you the uh, Pôle Excellence Cyber, which you uh, see at the bottom with the different enablers that we have for collaboration between companies, education institutions here, and also the political landscape in this area, including the, uh, the defense area. Um, I show you the speaker series, which is a good possibility to get an idea of what the companies in this region are doing and what the cybersecurity research is doing here. So I invite you to participate there. With the poll, we're also organizing different events together with the different chairs. In particular, we're organizing PhD schools where also the companies participate. So these are great opportunities also for recruiting talents because 
like you know it from uh, from Canada, probably also it's quite challenging to get good workforce, to get young people attracted to the companies and all these events through the poll, they are helping you to get uh, the best uh, work people that are there. And so the great thing is also that as Brittany is investing so much in the education of these uh, people, you have the talents right in place. We also have MOOCs. I brought, put you one here that is interesting because it's teaching a bit how the uh, internet is working and it's also freely available. There are more of them. So when you look at the PAC website, so the Polex and Ossiva website, you will see many more resources that are available there. And of course, um, when you come to, the, to France, but also when you're in Canada, we are happy to collaborate with you doing research. There's also something that the poll fosters some joint research projects, um, acquiring money of the local funding organizations. And uh, yeah, so I cordially invite you also to uh, go in that direction. Yeah, that uh, already closes my presentation. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. And now I'm very happy to uh, receive your questions. And sorry once again for my voice. So it's really that's okay. Changing all the time, and uh, no so now it's even better than at the beginning. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much. That was fantastic. It's great to hear of all of the um, research and collaboration going on at uh, Pole Excellence, and um, looking forward to hearing some questions from the audience. So um, the first one, New Brunswick is very interested and more collaboration with Pole Excellence. How can we and NB companies become connected so we can consider which events or programs are most appropriate? So the, uh, the best thing, what I recommend you is go to the website. So you have the link here on the uh, bottom left and uh, there you find, uh, for instance, the event calendar and you find also a very good uh, overview on the different um, activities that we have. Plus, let me just quickly jump back to the newsletter page. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is our uh, press contact. So you can always reach out to her as well to get the newsletter, but you'll find it also on the website. So this would be the, the best option. And um, we are also like when you're sometimes in the region and after COVID it's possible again, we're also participating as Paul and also as chair, of course, at the big cybersecurity events like the um, uh, the FIC in Lille, which is every January and so on. So you also find us at the events uh, together with the partners. So we are very visible normally here in the area. Okay, so is there, if a company wants to collaborate in terms of R&D, um, would they, is there kind of a process they go through to be selected or is there kind of a business development person for the poll or how does that work? So there, so there are people exactly for that. And that means the best thing is get in contact with us. And then afterwards, uh, we'll put you in contact with the right person and they will develop with you um, how the uh, path will continue. Because the great thing about the poll is really that as we are connected with all these different partners, uh, we are a very good um, hub in the sense of distributing you to the right people and okay. so on. Great. Um... So I noticed some of the companies um, that you're partnering with are not French companies. So what is the general interest for a partnership with international companies, in particular Canadian companies? And are you currently collaborating with any Canadian companies? So the, uh, the general interest of collaborating with international companies is, of course, that uh, security is nothing national. So the internet doesn't have borders. And that means uh, we are, of course, interested to get input from the outside and also to give input to the outside because we believe in uh, making the world a more secure place is a, is a good activity to do. And therefore, um, of course, we have high interest in collaborating. As chair, of course, for us, it's interesting to collaborate, for instance, in your Horizon Europe projects where Canada can also be an affiliated member. So this is, uh, of course, something very interested, uh, interesting for us. 
from the chair side, I can tell you that we have uh, collaboration with different academic institutions at the moment in uh, Canada from the Pol Excellence where I uh, have unluckily to say that I don't know which are our Canadian partners for the moment. That means um, please contact them over the website and then they will for sure be able to, to give you the answer to that. So. And what about funding for um, partnerships? Is there any funding available through the poll for that encourage international partnerships? So the, the poll is more an enabler for collaboration. That means um, we can bring you together with the entities that are then actually giving the funding. And uh, so uh, there are for sure activities in that direction. Um, for more concrete answer, I refer you again to uh, please get in contact with us and uh, then we put you in contact with the people that can give you a much more detailed and much better answer than I would be able to do it at the moment. Okay. Um, so we're looking at uh, different connector events right now in France um, in the cyberspace. Um, so would you feel that if we were to bring a delegation uh, that FIC would be the best connector event? Um, so in in the France cybersecurity area, this is the biggest event, and so this is happening every. So I mean, it will be, it will be happening online actually in uh, I guess one month or something like that um, this year. But normally it's happening in January in Lille, and so this is the biggest event. Besides that, I would say that the Pol Excellence there is also a very good. Um, connection points so or the ECW, for instance, is always at the end of the year. So this would then be the more realistic next um, event, uh, big event uh, to participate, uh, to do such a thing. The Brittany region itself as a central partner of the uh, Polex and Ossibar is also always very interested in uh, establishing partnerships to, uh, to different um, parts in the world. And therefore this could also be a very good opportunity um, to, to start such a partnership and we would be very happy to, to establish a, um, a bigger and a more elaborated partnership uh, together with, uh, with you, of course. Okay, great. Um, so what do you feel is the biggest uh, challenge facing cybersecurity today? So uh, what, what I typically say to this question is that uh, the the biggest, first biggest challenge is rising awareness because people, especially before COVID, were not at all aware of the relevance of cybersecurity. And now with the COVID, they learn more and more that uh, we have to secure our environments because we totally depend on the technology. So first thing I would say is awareness. And the second thing then when the people are getting more aware of it, then the second thing is how can we teach them, how can we give them the skills in order to really implement, as I showed in the presentation, this security by design, meaning you really have to consider security from the beginning of when you create a product and it's nothing that you can attach later. And for all these, um, what you currently see on the screen, so the different activities go exactly in the direction. So the speaker series is really for rising awareness, plus also discussing a little bit more in detail the things. The PhD schools, of course, are for putting the skills in the already highly skilled um, PhD students so that when they then get into leading positions in companies later that they can bring in the spirit um, to bring in the security and the MOOCs are kind of a, as they are massive open online, they are kind of a, the, an event for really distributing security knowledge to, to a lot of different people. Plus of course the other activities that we have, but just to show you a little bit of portfolio that goes into the direction answering this challenge of rising awareness and uh, teaching people. So education, yeah. Yes. Um, so in terms of your research uh, and development initiatives and your collaborations with um, industry, do you feel that there are any particular gaps um, that you're currently looking to fill in your, your projects? And could those potentially be filled by Canadian or other international companies? So, uh, mm. Well, so the research chairs, they're always organized in waves. And so we are now going into a third wave and uh, with the different partners for us come knowledge, but of course also application cases. And uh, therefore 
um, if we would have more industry 4.0 related um, companies or also visualization related companies uh, that, uh, that want to do something in the cybersecurity domain with us, that, that would be a great thing. Besides that, the big question of the moment, which is for me explainable AI, this is something where we're always very interested to extend our knowledge and to also have some collaborations in that direction. And maybe a third answer to that would be that whenever uh, so for me at the moment the big thing is uh, sharing information between companies for instance for increasing the security of systems and so from the chair perspective this would be a very good opportunity um, to, to collaborate in that direction if some of the companies would be interested from the poor perspective um, as you've seen there's like a lot of uh, areas that are already covered but as said before for us it's of course always good not to be only in our own uh, ecosystem and nucleus, but to really have lots of contacts, uh, contacts and exchanges regarding all the three aspects. So regarding business development, regarding education, and also uh, doing research, obviously. Great. Um, okay, so um, is there any other questions from the audience? Great. Well, if there's no other questions, then I think we will wrap up the session. Um, thank you so much, Mark. Um, thank you so much, Eric, for the for the possibility. It oh. was a, was a great pleasure exchanging with you, and I'm really hoping that uh, we can get in contact. So you have our contact details, and uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, please uh, please reach out. Hi, Cyber Cyber CNIFR is the website, great. and. So um, can I share the contact information with our Canadian companies? Sure, for sure. Yeah, you can also, I can also share the slide set or I mean, I shared it already. So I would be totally fine with that. Great. And and Mark, for, for your knowledge, there will be, um, this presentation will be live on the platform for a year. So Perfect. If, you, if you want to share this with any of your contacts, then that would be appreciated. Very good. Oh, there is, there is another question coming in just before we wrap up. Have you have you collaborated with any Canadian companies today? So as chair, I have not collaborated with a Canadian com company yet because the problem as a chair is always that you have to get uh, funding for collaboration and uh, therefore the only funding program that I'm aware of at the moment would be the um, Horizon Europe program where the Canadian company could be attached without getting funding and there are also always bilateral ones and so if you feel interested um, I'll be happy, very happy to discuss it more in detail with you. So could you elaborate a little bit on the Rise in Europe program? <clears throat> yeah, so the Horizon Europe program, it's always the European Union is um, funded by its member states and then it's giving money back to do some research uh, and development. So research and innovation, it's called with the uh, entities in Europe. And these are projects that typically have a runtime of three years <clears throat> and a funding of between maybe 2 million and uh, 20 million. So it can be really huge. And uh, these are consortia of uh, sizes from four, which would be really small, up to 50 partners that are then doing research together on something. So there are, for instance, cybersecurity um, focused programs where some uh, teaching was developed. But there's also a lot of development that is going on in these projects where they um, research um, institutions like us get together with the companies and the European Union gives funding in order to develop things and afterwards the companies, depending on the contract they created, can use the IP in their products to then uh, develop further with that. So it's a really great instrument to create foreground and to do some research together with a multi-national um, um, consortium. And, and what about Horizon 2020 funding? Is that something that companies could also leverage? <clears throat> yeah, so Horizon 2020 funding was the old program and the new one is called Horizon Europe. So oh, it's okay. exactly the same. It's just the successor of that one, which is now called Horizon Europe. And uh, typically it's the case that Canada is associated with that one. That means um, the European Union is happy if Canadian companies join. They can also be part of the consortia, but they will not get funding from the European Union for that. That means they have to bring their own funding or get local funding, but they were very welcome also in these European projects. And the, the Horizon Europe is in force now? Yes. 
So it started with this year, and that means the H2020 projects are now slowly getting to an end. And if you apply now to the new wave, it's called Horizon Europe. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right. Well, I think um, that's wonderful. And I think that's something that our companies should definitely look into, especially if they're interested in, in France so or in Europe in general. Um, great. So thank you again, Mark Oliver. And uh, we look forward to farther collaborations between Pole Excellence and New Brunswick. Perfect. And if people want to discuss more in detail, there's also the networking event later where I'll be also present, of course. Yes, of course. So, so Mark Oliver will be hosting um, one of our breakout rooms later today. So I would encourage you to connect directly with him then and uh, you can begin the conversation of potential areas of collaboration.